Good evening, everyone. Another brutal day of selling on Wall Street. Not only did the Dow turn negative for the year and suffer its third triple-digit loss of this week, the Nasdaq also had a rare triple-digit decline. The main culprit here, semiconductor stocks. Microchip technology tumbled the most in almost six years after the company warned of a possible correction in the industry triggering a sell-off in other chip names like Freescale, Intel, and Texas Instruments. Stocks sold off into the closing bell after another up-and-down session. The Dow lost 115 points. The Nasdaq tumbled 102 points, posting its first back-to-back 2 percent declines in three years. And the S&P down 22 points. So far this month, the Dow has moved more than 2,000 points, and that's just in the last eight trading days. And for the week, the major averages each ended lower the third week in a row. The Dow down nearly 3 percent, the Nasdaq off by 4.5 percent, and the S&P slipped more than 3 percent. So what should investors like you do to protect your portfolio in these volatile markets? Sharon Epperson has some advice from the experts. Hi, Sharon. Well, hi, Tyler. It's certainly been a rough week for many investors, but there are some defensive moves that you can take to protect your portfolio. Start by reviewing your time horizon and risk profile. Short-term investors may find themselves out of luck in a volatile market, but taking a longer-term view, the stock market's recovery over the past five years has seen a 70 to 80 percent return in many portfolios. This week's 2 to 3 percent loss is small in comparison. And if you're a long-term investor, financial advisors agree that it's important not to panic, even if there's a broader correction. That said, now may be a good time to sell your big winners and lock in some gains. You can reinvest the proceeds in more conservative investments. Another option is to use a stop-loss order to protect gains and minimize losses. That's in order to sell a stock that is triggered when the share price reaches a certain level. And finally, you may want to consider your asset allocation and ensure that it's balanced, including not just stocks and bonds that suit your risk profile, but also alternative investments, such as managed futures or long short funds, which can reduce volatility in the portfolio while delivering solid returns. Now, every investor should keep in mind that the stock market often experiences at least one pullback a year, but pullbacks always do come to an end. Oh, that's a really good point. Yeah. Sharon, stay uh, with us, and let's sure. bring in Ron Carson. He manages portfolios totaling more than $4 billion at his firm, Carson Wealth Management, where he is the founder and CEO. Ron, welcome to the program. Let me just pick up on something that oh, Sharon... thanks for having me. Great to have you here. Sharon uh, just said a moment ago, and I think this is something that people lose sight of, that over the last five years, the S&P turned around 80 uh, percent after a big correction. Is it sometimes better to do nothing and just ride it out, or should you really be making changes in your portfolio? What are your thoughts, and what are you telling your clients? Well, I think it makes sense most of the time to do nothing. I mean, we had a 7 percent drawdown in January. Uh, April, we had four. August, we had four. I think we're down five and a half, maybe six percent on this current sell off. And most of the time, you know, the market tends to do whatever it needs, needs to do to prove the largest number of people wrong in any given moment. And a lot has not changed, and I certainly wouldn't panic. Uh, investor behavior is the most important factor in how someone's going to do long term. So if you have an appropriate allocation, then I would not do anything. I, I gather you're basically saying that more investors hurt themselves more by doing something than by doing nothing, right? Yes. I mean, this is a hated bull market, mm -hmm. really, when you think about off the lows of January, because most people haven't entered it. You know, the retail investors just started to tiptoe back. There's still a lot of worry out there. And, you know, there's some other factors going but on. But... Um, you know, my friend Bob but, Dahl said he thinks we're eight to ten year bull market. I don't know if we have that long left, but I but I don't think this is anything. But to worry what about, about Sharon's in point? I'm sorry to interrupt uh, about taking profits on some of your big wins. Nobody ever lost money taking profits, Ron. I agree that you do pay tax on taking profits, and all the studies I've seen and I see it firsthand that people that make short term reactions they take profits. Typically, those positions are higher. Now, we have trim positions. Uh, we do, you know, the dollar was up in the third quarter versus a euro 8 percent. We think that's going to continue. So if you're owning big multinationals that are getting at least 40 to 50 percent of their earnings overseas, I think that's going to be a headwind. We've definitely trimmed profits in those areas. I mean, now it's just a good time, I think, guys, for people to 
use this as a wake-up call. If you are at all worried about what you've seen in the volatility that you've seen in the market, just take the time to assess where you are. Make sure that you can tolerate this kind of correction if it's even if there is a broader correction and make sure that what you've allocated because you probably have seen some really big gains is what your allocation should be so if you were going to be 60 40 stocks and bonds and now you're 70 30 you do need to do what Ron said and trim some of those profits and and reallocate so that you're invested properly let me ask you this and then we'll also ask Ron too you said don't panic I mean obviously take the emotion out of this but what is the most common mistake that people make in these volatile trading sessions I think it is just being emotional and saying you know looking at a statement and saying this went down this much now I want to just get me out of it rather than realizing that you're in these positions whether it's Europe whether it's large cap multinational companies for a reason and if it's the reason is to get to a certain financial goal you need to stay there if you want to reach that goal and Ron what do you think is is you agree with what Sharon's saying or is there something else I really agree with what she says I think a lot of people invest I mean people spend more time picking out a car than they will financial <laughs> advisor or any even investment they're going to make and you really need to understand what you own. Volatility will either be a curse or a gift. If, if, you, if you really understand why you own, what you own, how it fits into your long-term objectives, this is a gift that you can add to high-quality companies. If you're guessing, you're going to panic and you're going to destroy long-term value in your portfolio. Is it too late to hedge now, Ron? And give me a very quick answer. Uh, what's the best way to hedge? We believe in irreplaceable capital strategies. You hedge with using uh, some of the derivatives. You need to understand how much you can afford to lose and hedge the rest of it out of the market. All right, Ron. And it's not too late. All right. Thanks, Ron and Sharon, both of you. Have a great weekend. Ron Carson with Carson Wealth Management. And Sharon's going to be back a little later in the program with a look at millennials and their money and why this demographic is actually better off financially than you might think.